Hey everybody and welcome to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. My name is Andrew Miles. Today we're going to go over a very important herb for gynecology and the incredible story of how it was discovered. Hua Tuo was one of the most famous physicians in East Asia. He lived from 145 AD to 208 AD when he was killed by King Cao Cao. Hua Tuo used botanical anesthesia and performed miraculous surgeries with the aid of herbal antibiotics. He also had an uncanny ability to predict how long a patient would live afterwards, naming the year and even the month that they would live to. He also mapped out the nerve roots along the spinal column and accurately described which organs and nerve roots they went to. He was a surgeon, an acupuncturist, bone setter, and herbalist. He also had a set of exercises he taught to patients for recovery called the Five Animal Frolics. He saw many patients, and herb distributors would come from distant places to sell him herbs. To ensure the quality was consistent, he grew herbs in a personal garden as a control sample so he would know if the herbs the patients were taking were high quality. He could see the living plants growing and compare them with the scent and flavor of those that he bought. One day, a businessman gave him wild peony. He said, I heard this can treat a lot of diseases. I don't really know what it does, but the people in that area are going nuts about it. They swear that it's awesome. So I took some cuttings and I thought I'd bring them to you. Watua thanked him and planted it in his garden. He waited for it to flourish over the next couple of years. He tasted the flowers and the leaves and the stems and he didn't find any strong flavors, and he didn't feel any effects on his own body. So when you're talking about the flavors that he's testing, there's a podcast earlier that we did on how plant flavors can affect gazotransmitters and microbiota. This is the way that the flavors affect the chi in the body. This is somebody who is very in touch with his own body, So by tasting the flavors of the plants, he could feel how they affected the qi movement within his own body, or the movement of these gases, these gasotransmitters. He tastes the plant, he doesn't really feel anything, he thinks, well, it's pretty, but it's probably overstated or some kind of placebo that the local people are using. He left it alone. It was pretty enough, so he left it in the garden. One night, he wakes up because he hears a woman weeping in the garden. He goes out to check on her. Maybe it's a hobo, maybe somebody's trying to snatch his herbs. I'm guessing he probably brought a broom to go ahead and shoo her off. That's how I picture it anyway. As he got close, he didn't find the woman. Instead, he only saw the peony. He went back home, and as he looked out the window, he saw the crying woman again. So he grabbed the broom, probably, and went to shoo her away. Instead, he only saw the peony. He woke up his wife and told her what he saw. His wife said, Every plant in the garden has become useful as medicine except this one. Maybe you weren't nice to it. Huo Tuo said, I've done everything I could on the plant. I tried to nurture it, but it doesn't seem to have any effects. A year or so later, his wife was having extreme flooding in her period, menorrhagia with severe cramps. Hua Tuo gave her herbs, but they didn't work well. His wife thought of that plant and the spirit of the plant that was crying in the night. And she thought, out of all the herbs we have, that's the only one that we haven't tested. And all of the parts of it seemed to be useless, but he never tried the root. She dug up the plant by the roots and boiled the roots into a tea. She drank it, and her cramps and flooding in her period diminished within a few doses. She told Hua Tuo what happened. And this is how the root of the peony, Bai Shao, started to be used in herbal medicine. Hua Tuo, who performed brain surgery 2,000 years ago with herbal anesthesia, Hua Tuo, who had an uncanny knack for prognosis, Hua Tuo, who removed tumors and mapped out the parts of the body in excruciating detail. 
was the epitome of an expert physician. In spite of this, when he was given a divine sign, he ignored it. His wife, however, went with it. The underlying moral of the story is that there is so far that logic will take us, and then there is a lot to be said about intuition. What was that plant spirit trying to tell Hua Tuo? Thanks to modern pharmacology, we can find out a little bit of what she was trying to tell him. Bai Shao, Radix Pionia Alba, is anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antiviral. It regulates the immune system, it protects the heart, and is very protective for the liver. It can heal injured livers. It regulates gastrointestinal movement, which is why it's useful for irritable bowels, constipation, and diarrhea. It regulates the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal thyroid axis, lowering increased androgens, lowering stress hormones, which is why it's used in antidepressant formulas such as Xiaoyao tea. It lowers blood lipids. It has antioxidant effects. And it also is very helpful for PCOS. In women with PCOS, it's been found to reduce the testosterone in the blood and increase estradiol. Bai Xiao is a very, very important herb in Chinese medicine. It's used in most gynecology formulas. Last week, we talked about a formula for gynecology using Dangui. This formula, the root formula of it, Su Wutang, also uses Bai Xiao. Interestingly, this herb is even used in cold formulas, formulas for the common cold. And this isn't so much for its effect on hormones as much as its anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antiviral properties. Traditionally, it's said to balance the yin and wei, which are aspects today that we would refer to as immune factors. Because of this, Bai Shao is indispensable in modern Chinese medicine. When Bai Shao is used in Xiaoyao San, it's used because of its hormonal regulating properties. So this is like somebody who is really good at math and they're also really good at football. When they're on the football team, they may play the part of the quarterback. When they're doing math, they may be doing advanced trigonometry. In the different contexts, they have the different role. So if you take this herb by itself, sure, it might have worked on Hua Tuo's wife. But generally speaking, by itself, it's going to be fairly useless to moderately useful. Basically, what most people out there think about herbal medicine, yeah, there may be a little bit of something to it, but it's not that useful. That's pretty true when it comes to single herbs, especially herbs like Bai Shao. However, when you put them in the right context, they really start to sing in a very synergistic way with the rest of the formula. Put it into a gynecology formula, it works majestically. Put it into a formula for the common cold, it has incredible results. When you put it into an anti-depression formula, it has those abilities as well. And this is just the way that these formulas are engineered so that by combining the herbs together, you can nullify their side effects and yet potentiate their good points and make their good points for that particular case more bioavailable. So Bai Shao has a bitter and sour flavor. So if you've Listen to the podcast episode on plant flavors. You should already know that this herb is likely to be cooling and drying in nature. Now remember, when we talk about plant flavors, we're ballparking it. In reality, it is cool, but it's actually a little bit moistening. It affects the liver and spleen channels, as most sour plants do. It's used to nourish blood, preserve yin, regulate menstruation, balance the yin and wei, calm liver yang, and extinguish liver wind. So this is an interesting idea. Liver yang and liver wind. What would this mean in a modern context? Liver wind is generally when you see tremors. When we see tremors from a modern context, we're thinking nerve damage. And this is true. So how do herbs like this help with the nerve damage. One aspect is that 
when they have actions on building blood, they're also unleashing endogenous antioxidants in the body to stop the oxidative reaction that's actively damaging the nerve and give it a chance to heal. The other aspect is that because they have slightly tranquilizing effects, they can kind of turn down the electricity that's going through those nerves. So if you think about having some rusty wires in the house, you want to make sure that the electricity is either off or turned down because the more you turn it up, the more you're going to get sparks flying everywhere. And this is what we see with, um, you know, with people who have twitchy eyes or they have Parkinson's in one level or another. These kind of herbs said traditionally to extinguish liver wind by increasing blood or moving blood have an effect on this because in terms of the pharmacology, what they appear to be doing is soothing and alleviating the damage that's happening to the nerves. It's also said to soften and comfort the liver. It's a very traditional way of saying it. Interestingly, Baishao can literally soften the liver and when people have been drinking too much, they have a little bit of cirrhosis going on. When it's starting to happen, it can soften and prevent that liver damage and really help it to recover afterwards. So when don't you use it? You shouldn't take an extract of this at a high dose while operating heavy machinery because it'll make you sleepy. Then you're going to run over some little kids and probably feel bad about it. Unless you're a legit psychopath, then you'll probably not feel so bad and blame someone else. I'm not judging. I'm just stating the facts. Probably. This is really a go-to herb clinically when you see muscle spasms. An athlete having muscle spasms. Uh, an older woman having muscle spasms. If you see muscle spasms, you can probably add this to the formula, add this to the mix, add this to your protocol, and it'll help quite a bit. And particularly... People who have these muscle spasms around the calves, my go-to will be to give them an herbal foot soak and then to give them an appropriate formula that also includes Bai Shao. This will alleviate the muscle cramps really quickly. In my experience, it's same day to the, you know, one to three days. These really troublesome calf muscle cramps can ease up, as well as plantar fasciitis. If you have these kind of tension around the legs and uh, around the tendons and then the fascia because of the muscle cramping, this is a very useful herb to use. Thank you so much for listening to the Botanical Biohacking Podcast. That one was short but sweet. As some of you out there have said you really love the short and sweet ones. Some of you like the longer ones. We try to get a little bit of both to make sure nobody comes after us with pitchforks. Try to play it safe. So please keep telling your friends keep telling your family we appreciate all of the referrals and the interest it's nice to be able to connect with you even if it's through your earbuds so keep those screenshots coming of your reviews of botanical biohacking on itunes and stitcher send them to us at botanicalbiohacking at gmail.com and every month we have a drawing and you may be one of the lucky winners who gets some herbs we'll, or tea. We'll send it to you and then at the end of the year we'll select one name and buy you a ticket and if you like we'll fly you out to Sichuan to see the herb fields and get a real feel for what's going on there. Thanks again. This is Andrew Miles and Cho Shui Lan. <laughs>